friends, ladies and gentlemen, and those of you who are joining us online. At this time, we are going to begin the funeral services for Lawrence Larry Freeman. For those of you here in person, if you have a cell phone or a pager, uh, we would ask for you to please take a moment to turn that off, or at least to the silent or vibrate mode. And officiating today's services will be Rabbi Amy Memus Fuller from Beth Emmet, the Free Synagogue in Evanston. Thank you. So we're going to begin with um, tearing this, uh, this ribbon. Ribbon, okay. Okay, so there's a, oh, you know what, I'll share this. Okay. Right now, Melody is wearing a ribbon on her, um, on her shirt that comes from the tradition that our patriarch Jacob, when he heard the news that he thought his son Joseph had died, he tore his clothing in, in arms. And so it's customary to wear uh, a ribbon on the outside, and we tear that ribbon rather than our clothes. And so I'm going to approach Melody um, and just uh, begin that, that ritual, and then I'll come back to the next which means, Blessed are you, eternal our God, judge of truth. Until we're feeling inside, which is torn. Okay. I want to thank everyone who is here today, whether you were able to make it here at the graveside or you're watching along with us through the blessing of technology. We feel your presence and your comfort and support. Death has taken our beloved Lawrence, Larry Friedman, Freeman. Our friends grieve in their darkened world. In their silence, there is lamentation. In their tears, there is loneliness. Lost in their sorrow, may they find the presence of loving friends. Hear them, O oh God, be with them. For Larry's love that united us in life in which death cannot sever for his companionship that we shared along life's path and which continues through the tenderness of memory, for the gifts of his heart and mind that brought us joy and happiness and is now a precious remembrance. For all these and more, we give our thanks to God. In this time of grief, we listen to the voice of our sacred scriptures that brings us the ever new message of God's nearness. It tells us of our kinship with the creator in light as in darkness, in joy, as in sorrow, in life, as in death. Adonai ro'i lo echzar bino deshet yar b'tseni, al mei minuchot yinach aleni, nafshi yishobev yancheni v'maglei tzedek l'ma'an shemo, gam ki elech v'geit salmavet lo irava, ki ata imadi, shivtecha u'mishantecha, hema yinach amuni, to Aroch Lefanai Shulchan Neged Soravai, Dishanta Vashem and Roshi, Kosi Ravaya, Achto Vachesed Yerdefuni, Kolyame Chayai, Vishapti Bevet Adonai, Le Orech Yamim. If you would like to read along with the 23rd Psalm in English, which I just read in Hebrew, you can find the words on the inside of your service folder. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. As we find comfort in those ancient words, so too might we find comfort in these more modern words, which come from our High Holy Day liturgy written by Rabbi Alvin Fine. Earth is a beginning and death a destination, but life is a journey, a going, a growing, stage to stage, 
from childhood to maturity and youth to age, from innocence to awareness and ignorance to knowing, from foolishness to discretion and then perhaps to wisdom, from weakness to strength or strength to weakness and often back again, from health to sickness and back we pray to health again, from offense to forgiveness, from loneliness to love, from joy to gratitude, from pain to compassion, and grief to understanding, from fear to faith, from defeat to defeat to defeat until looking backward or ahead, we see that victory lies not at some high place along the way, but in having made the journey stage by stage a sacred pilgrimage. Earth is a beginning and death a destination, but life is a journey, a sacred pilgrimage made stage by stage from birth to death to life everlasting. Jews around the world are now at a special period in the cycle of our Jewish calendar. We are in the fifth of seven weeks of consolation between the observance of what we call Tisha B'Av, the ninth of Av, which commemorates the destruction of the first and second temples in Jerusalem and Rosh Hashanah, our Jewish New Year. During these seven weeks, Jews read a special series of texts from our Haftarah, that prophetic weekly portion, which comes from the book of Isaiah. As Jews around the world receive comfort at this time of year, so do those who are close to Larry Freeman need comfort. We are saddened by his loss, but may we also be consoled by recalling some of the memories we experienced with him. For Larry was a beloved husband of Melody, loving father of Pam and Jerry, and then Bill and Jody, cherished grandfather of Sean, Toby, Mitchell, Hillary, and Charlie, and then Julie, dear brother of the late Wilma and his late twin Linda, and their spouses Don and the late Myron, adoring uncle of Steve, Susan, Julia, and Allison, and their spouses and children, close cousin to Robbie, devoted family member, loyal worker, and trusted friend, Larry will be deeply missed. We know that a eulogy could never fully capture all 83 years of his life, but I share with you these brief words with the hope that they may offer some highlights of who Larry was and give us comfort during this time of loss. Larry, or Lawrence, as was his given name, was born to parents Irving and Mildred Freeman, Zichronam Levracha. He was the dear younger brother of the late Wilma and twin brother to his sister, the late Linda. When they were each married, his siblings, Larry was the fond brother-in-law to Don and the late Myron. Stories as I heard them were that when the twins were little, Larry and Linda were simply adorable, and they received lots of attention. Raised in a traditional Jewish home with a kosher kitchen, Larry's Jewish identity was important to him. When the family was checking the pockets of Larry's suit in which he would be buried, they found a High Holy Day ticket from 2016, the last time he was able to attend services. <coughs> Larry's father had immigrated from Lithuania to this country. Irving and his brother created the Freeman Tire Company located on the south side of Chicago. Larry worked for a while in the family business doing body and fender work. Then in his early 20s, he began his career as a postal worker. He was a mail handler and loyal to his job for his whole career. How proud he felt when he learned that his grandson Mitchell started his job as a postal worker. Larry was blessed in his 50s to have met the love of his life, Melody. They both were volunteering at the Epilepsy Foundation when they met. While this was Larry's first ma marriage, Melody, whose first husband had died, had a whole family that welcomed Larry into the fold. And the same can be said of Larry toward the whole family. He became like a father to Pam and Jerry and their spouses, Bill and Jody. There was a true blending of families where holiday celebrations extended to whomever was able to come, whether it be 
one home for Christmas or another time for Hanukkah. Larry and Melody spent over two decades together. This November would have been 30, 30 years in which they looked out for one another, took care of each other, especially when their health waned. Together they enjoyed volunteering at the Marriott Lincolnshire Theater as ushers, which enabled them to see all the shows. They loved the arts and music, including classical and opera. I learned, Melody, that your mother had been an opera singer, and it's possible that opera was not Larry's favorite. <laughs> Yet he listened as a way of supporting you. He loved the symphony, and you and he would take the grandchildren to the concerts. Larry took art classes at the Art Institute, or other classes, and the two of them traveled after Larry had retired. Some favorite destinations include a cruise to Alaska, along with trips to Florida and Nantucket. And Larry was a beloved grandfather to Sean, Toby, Mitchell, Hillary, and Charlie, and then Julie. I share with you these words from the grandchildren of Lawrence Freeman. Grandpa Larry was a loving, kind, and witty man who made it known that he was proud of each grandchild and cherished us all. He loved talking to us about our interests and would passionately talk about his, especially his TV shows. Some of our best memories involve going on walks with him. He loved walking, even as he grew in age and we loved shuffling next to him. He was a fantastic grandpa and we all loved him dearly. We will truly miss him. One grandchild story, which I heard the other day worth sharing is the time that Toby was over at her grandparents' home when Melody was in rehab, and so Larry had been home alone. Larry happened to have tickets to his couples club, a group of friends from work that he got together with once a month, or they got together once a month. Since Melody was otherwise occupied, Larry asked Toby if she could join him, and she said yes. How proud Larry was to have his grandchild to show off to all his friends. For Larry loved including his grandchildren in everything. There's one family story which has been told many times and will continue to be told, hopefully for generations to come. The family was on one of its fun camping trips and they decided to go canoeing. Melody knows what's coming. <laughs> Melody had been a Girl Scout and felt pretty confident that she and Larry would be good partners as they headed down the river in their canoe. When Pam and Bill and Jerry and Jody looked back to see that they were all together, they noticed that Larry and Melody were missing. So after Jody and Jerry paddled upstream against the current, they found that Larry and Melody were still where they started, paddling around in circles. <laughs> because they couldn't quite figure out how to coordinate their canoe. So Jody and Jerry reshuffled so that Jerry and Larry were in a canoe and Jody went with Melody. They were all set. But I've been told the story gets better. In their new canoe pairs, they headed downstream. Jerry and Larry encountered a tree and ended up swamping their canoe, at which point Larry lost his shoes. He was so concerned about his shoes that he was ready to let go of the canoe and chase after them. Lucky for Larry, his shoes liked him so much that even though the creek continued on at the bank where they exited from the creek, the shoes were waiting for Larry. And that was the shortened version. <laughs> and all the other things about Larry Freeman, how he loved Melody's cooking, especially your spinach dip. You would make it and bring it to all the family celebrations, and sometimes Larry would start sampling the spinach dip even before he sat down. How he loved your compote, which Larry's mother Mildred had taught you how to make. How he loved lemon meringue pie and his sister Wilma's brisket, which Larry was known to devour by himself completely if it weren't served plated rather than family style. How Larry would love to tell stories about his youthful gusty hopping on rooftops and holding onto the back of trucks in the winter 
sliding down the icy streets. How he loved to talk about Mildred and her youthful beauty and said she was a looker. How he adored Moe, the three-legged dog, and taking care of it. How he enjoyed his old TV shows and movies, especially ones with John Wayne. How he and Melody would delight in going to the UP to watch the grandkids ski. How he was such a kind and nice man. How he had a great sense of wit and a snarky, dry sense of humor. And all the other things about Larry Freeman that would take another 83 years to tell. As we work our way from Tisha B'Av to Rosh Hashanah, during these weeks and days of memory and recollection, let us be comforted by the thought that although he is no longer with us in this world, something of Larry Freeman can never die. He lives on in each of our memories and in the hearts of all who knew and loved him. O oh God of comfort, comfort us now and help us to keep alive the memory so dear to us in Larry Freeman. Amen. We pause now for a moment of silent meditation where each of us might recall a memory that we shared with Larry. May the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our redeemer. As we are able, we rise. Compassionate God, eternal spirit of the universe, grant perfect rest in your sheltering presence to Lawrence Freeman who has entered eternity. O God of mercy, let him find refuge in the shadow of your wings and let his soul be bound up in the bond of everlasting life. God, you are his inheritance. May he rest in peace. And let us say, Amen. Amen. We turn now to the words of the mourners Kaddish. If you would like to follow along, they are on the back of your service folder. Yit gadal v'yit kadash rabba the Alma Divrav Hirute, the Amalik Mahute, a Chaye Khon, the Ome Khon, Chaye de Fol, Be Israel, a Agala, his man Karivi, Imru, Ame, Yehe Shame, Rabba, the Rav, the Olam, Ome, Omaya, Yit Barak, Vishabak, Vit Paar, Vit Roman, Vit Nase, 
May the source of peace send peace to all who mourn and comfort to all who are bereaved. And let us say, Amen. Those who wish may take a seat at this time or you may remain standing as you feel comfortable as we continue now with the lowering of the casket. What I'm going to do before the vault cover is put on is I'm going to add a little bit of earth from Israel to the casket. They say if we can't be buried in Israel, may a little of Israel be buried with us.
extremely slippery right here at this this point, please. Be aware of that. Very. It is the Jewish custom to help bury our loved ones. It's the gift or the offering we give a person for which there is no thank you. It's customary to place three shovelfuls of earth on our loved one's grave, because three in Judaism shows intention. If you do something once, it could be an accident, twice a coincidence, but three times shows that we really have an intention of doing this mitzvah, this commandment, this good deed. My rabbi and mentor of beloved memory, Rabbi Mark S. Shapiro, said, think of it not as dirt, as schmutz, Rather, think of it as earth, it's soil, it has the nutrients therein that are needed to have life grow again. So for those who feel comfortable doing so, we invite you to take three shovelfuls of earth. Um, as we heard earlier, the, the surface is pretty slippery. Just be careful, mind your step. And um, the custom is also to have to return the, the shovel back to the earth because this is not a mitzvah that we're rushing to hand off to the next person. So I invite members of the immediate family to come forward first. on either side of the grave and participate.
control more of it than you can. It's really up to you. How do you want, where do you want the flour to go on? After they're done or on top when they put all the dirt in or when they get some of the dirt in? When they're all done? Okay. When they're all done. Right. I have some. I have two bones in my heel. So. Bone spurs. Bone spurs. Like a bone spur. No, no. Friends, if there's anyone else who'd like to come forward and participate in the burial, we would invite and encourage you to do so at this time. And if not, then the cemetery staff will complete the task of filling the grave. Once they've done that, then some of the family members will place some flowers on top of it. Just as a and just as a reminder, the family is going to be gathering at La Zingara Trattoria at 2300 East Rand Road in Arlington Heights following the internment. And if the family has requested any memorial contributions in Larry's memory, the Epilepsy Foundation of Greater Chicago. And that information is available on the service folder. And for those of you joining us online, that's also available on our website. And at this time, we are going to conclude the transmission through Zoom, and the uh, formal portion of the service here is not complete. Thank you.